Hello everyone, my name is Lucas Borsma. I'm an electrophysiologist from St. Antonius Hospital in the Netherlands and a professor of electrophysiology at the Amsterdam UMC Medical Center. So with me today is Vivek Reddy, who you all know, uh, who has just presented hot off the press a late breaker on a, a new PFA technology for pulmonary vein isolation. It's called the Sphere 360. It's very exciting, I think. Um, Again, Vivek, congratulations on, uh, on your late breaker. Obviously, a very interesting new data. Could you uh, offer us a summary of what you've just presented? Sure, Lucas. Um, first of all, thanks for having me. Um, the Sphere 360 catheter is a pulse fluid ablation catheter. As you are well aware, uh, pulse fluid ablation is sort of transforming our field in terms of AF ablation. And we have some really good tools, but doesn't mean they can't get better. The Sphere 360 catheter is somewhat unique. It's a large lattice catheter designed to do pulmonary vein isolation in one fell swoop. It's an over-the-wire system where you introduce the wire into the vein, then you track the device over, and it has a lattice-like, somewhat conformable uh, structure, so you can sort of, it morphs partly to the anatomy. Uh, it's also linked to an electron anatomical mapping system. So as you sweep it around inside the chamber, you can render the left atrial anatomy. It also has a few mini electrodes in order to uh, obtain electrical information at baseline, post-ablation, whatever you'd like to do. In this study, this is the first in human study at three centers in Europe, including a total of 85 patients and, and six operators did these procedures. And over the course of the experience, because in the study, we actually had a remapping procedure at around 75 days. So as, we, as the study progressed, when we realized that the first pulse waveform wasn't quite perfect, then the waveform continued to evolve. So ultimately, there were three different waveforms that were employed in the trial. The final waveform, which provided the best results, the Pulse 3 waveform, was used in about 35 of these 85 patients. So the patients underwent the procedures. All the veins were isolated acutely, not surprisingly for Pulse Field. Of course, the question then becomes what happened, the safety, effectiveness, et cetera. From a safety perspective, we had excellent outcomes. There were zero major adverse events, so we were happy with that. Uh, from a clinical outcome perspective, the one-year success, of course, beyond a three-month uh, blanking period, was quite good at 80, 82% for the full cohort. And then from a durability perspective, the, the, the 75-day remap procedure, what we saw was Pulse 1 and Pulse 2, the success, the durability was not quite as good, but still reasonable in the 80% range for, on a per vein basis. But it was 99% for the Pulse 3 waveform. 99% on a per vein basis, 96% on a per patient basis. So we we're quite happy with those results. Um, I think uh, I think these are very good results. We're very happy with them. Yeah, it seems like the next generation PFA tool is already around the corner. While we still have to get used to uh, to the first generation of uh, of these PFA tools, this is sort of uh, uh, an improvement or uh, an expansion of the the Sphere Nine that we also know that can also use uh, radio frequency. Is that something you can also use with this catheter or it's really confined no. to PFA? No, this is really a pulse field catheter. You know, the Sphere 9 is a smaller catheter. You can irrigate the electrodes with central irrigation. This is very big, obviously, it's a, as a single shot. There's no irrigation. And in fact, you cannot deliver RF energy uh, through this lattice. So it really is a focused pulse field ablation catheter. Okay. Uh, well, I think it's a very interesting new tool. Do you think that we, uh, this is the ultimate tool now? Ultimate, it's the ultimate until the next ultimate tool. I mean, the reality is, as you pointed out, this is a very dynamic space. I mean, to our benefit, to the patient's benefit. So I'm actually very excited about what the future holds. I, I, and I do want to caution, obviously, this is still a relatively small study. Uh, we were using intermittent monitoring, not implantable loop recorders. So this still, these data need to be corroborated in larger studies, more operators. Can we get the same durability with, great, with a larger number of operators? Again, these are important questions to answer. Okay. Can we find the study already published somewhere? Yes, no, thank you for asking. Uh, it just actually went online in Europace. So for those that are interested, please do uh, look it up. I'm sure that a lot of people will be interested. So thank you again for doing the interview. And uh, I hope that uh, the viewers at home uh, will enjoy uh, this, this interview and also reading the paper by Vidic.